Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and the president of Bigman Geophysical, a full service geophysics company that uh, helps contractors, engineers, and other scientists with concrete scanning and testing, utility locating, archeology, span uh, sinkhole detection and characterization, infrastructure planning, and, uh, and a whole host of other applications. In today's video, I wanna discuss antenna orientation because there's some confusion around this uh, in some of the conversations I've had recently with folks, uh, specifically regarding what cross-polarization means. This term has now been used quite often in the GPR space, primarily with systems that are built for concrete scanning to locate and detect uh, embedments in concrete. And so systems now are coming out that are tagged as cross-polar as cross-polarized, and I just want to get kind of down into what's the terminology, what does that actually mean, is it really cross-polarized, and uh, how's it being used, right? And what you see at the end is, um, you know, what kind of it's typical, why there might be cross-polarization, and, uh, and is it useful? So we're going to kind of go through a couple different scenarios here, and we'll start with uh, what's called horizontal polarization. And basically, this is just how are the antenna inside the GPR antenna box configured? So for horizontal polarization, if we have sort of a, you know, squared antenna box, is going to look something like this. So you have two antenna, they're both horizontal, okay? This is the standard way that GPR antenna in the commercial space are uh, sold. This is how they're configured, it's how they're sold, and so your data collection direction is that way, right? So you have two antenna that are horizontally oriented compared to the direction of data acquisition. Vertical polarization is a 90 degree shift from this. And so instead what you would have is And there's two antenna in there. These are kind of bow tie antennas, what they're called. But there's two antenna because you have one that's a transmitter, one that's a receiver. Okay? And for vertical polarization, you shift 90 degrees what direction those antenna are sitting. So why would you do right now? Data collection is still in, in that direction. So they're vertical, right? They're in line with the direction of data collection. The reason you would do this and why it's being put on so many uh, uh, concrete scanning systems is the footprint of the signal that comes out is different when it's vertically polarized compared to horizontal polarization. And so here, the footprint's this way and it captures a lot of what's going on that is running uh, this direction. Whereas when you, when you shift them 90 degrees and now the antenna uh, the footprint of the signals coming out this way, it actually allows you to see, get more of the energy between wire mesh. So wire mesh is a real issue in concrete scanning because it's a dense layer of steel or metal that is hard to get into the energy through because 100% of the energy reflects off of the steel. So by shifting it 90 degrees, it reorients the footprint of the antenna signal and allows more of the energy to penetrate between this dense wire mesh, hopefully identifying uh, additional embedments below that wire mesh. So that's sort of been the reason that this has been a big deal lately. So what's been happening is uh, systems are coming out that have been termed as cross-polarization, but in reality, cross-polarization was originally configured like this. where you have, right, instead of, um, you know, vertical, vertical, okay? Here, what you have is you would have vertical and horizontal. So you have one of your antenna inside your box, vertical, and one antenna, horizontal. So you're taking a horizontal polarization across, uh, vertical polarization, and instead of keeping them the same, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical, you have a horizontal and a vertical, that is a cross-polarized orientation for the antennas. Uh, this is not what's happening in systems that are being termed as cross-polarized. 
So really what you're getting now in the commercial space is you're getting dual polarization. And so you'll get a, a system that has two polarizations with an horizontal, horizontal, and a vertical, vertical. And so the reason is you can use the horizontals in sort of normal fashion like you would with the rest of the commercially developed systems, and you automatically get the vertical orientation uh, as a second set of data to help you see between uh, wire mesh and things like that. So that is what is happening now. This dual polarization, though, is being called <clears throat> cross polarization, and I don't care what you use, right? You can use that, that's fine, but I just think it's important that people understand what sort of is going on here. Some have now termed this as commercial cross polarization and almost sort of an academic cross polarization. This has been used more for geology and, uh, and other deep applications um, because the footprint you know, allows you to see different things depending on how you orient the antenna but it's not typical for concrete scanning. It's not typical for utility locating. It's not typical for archeology. span It's not typical for finding uh, unmarked burials. And so it is more typical, although not totally typical, but in the geology uh, space or the, or, or, or the deep investigation space. So this is what is being uh, put into uh, many systems now that gives you dual polarization or called cross polarization where you have a transmitter and a receiver that are horizontal and a second set transmitter and receiver that are uh, vertical. There's one other way that this is being dealt with, which is on many systems, it'll be one polarization, a horizontal polarization, and they'll basically put a wheel off the back that can, um, you know, the wheels off the back, and then what you can do is you can change the orientation of the wheel so instead of it being just off the back and you're going this way, you can actually bend it so the wheel's going here. You turn this whole system so that it looks like this, okay? And the wheel's off the side now, and you can push that direction. And so you get single data sets uh, at a time, but you can run the system twice over the same line, once horizontal, once cross, and see if you can identify things below a wire. So I hope that this clears up some uh, confusion. You know, I do think it's important to go back to uh, the terminology and the vocabulary. Um, it's an important part of being a professional. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Like the, the video if you felt it was helpful. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, please share this with uh, somebody you know who you think might benefit.